so so lovely of you to stop by and press play on this video it is my absolute passion to be able to share this information with people like yourself because I know firsthand how quickly we can create change in our life if we know the formula for self-love so welcome I'm Tamara Mersica and I love to go deep and help people clear out the thinking patterns that are getting in the way of them enjoying life. So in order for me to help you to start living happily right now, the first thing we need to look at is self-love. What is it and how do we get it? Self-love is essentially letting go of all the thoughts we have about ourselves that are not true. So we're talking about thoughts like, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, I'm not skinny enough, smart enough, pretty enough, rich enough, sexy enough. All of the thoughts that we think about ourselves, this, this negative mind chatter. And getting rid of these thoughts is actually really, really simple. It's a simple process. But only if you're going straight into the subconscious mind and removing them from there because the subconscious mind is responsible for the creation of our thoughts. The subconscious is actually responsible for 90% of our thoughts, actions and behaviours. And the biggest problem for most people is that they only know how to work with their conscious mind, what they're consciously aware of. It's sort of like a garden. What we see when we look at a garden is everything above the soil. The flowers, the trees, the shrubs, the weeds. <laughs> This is what we're consciously aware of when we look at that garden. Yet there is a whole root system beneath the soil that most of us never get to see unless we go digging for it. And it's the same with our mind. So if our root system isn't healthy, neither will the flowers that we grow in the garden of our life. Now, you'll know that your root system needs some tending if you judge and criticize yourself, if you shrink in social situations, or if you're struggling with some awful life circumstances, whatever they might be. And yes, we can tell ourselves to stop thinking these horrible thoughts, to stop judging ourselves, And we can try to push these unhealthy thoughts from our mind. But if you've got programming in the subconscious that says otherwise, it doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself that those thoughts aren't true, they'll keep popping up. They really are like those weeds that we were talking about. Unless we remove the roots of the weeds, they keep coming back no matter how many times you pull the green leafy bits out of the ground. We need to get to the root system. If we look at the plant again, we pop a seed in the ground, it grows roots, then it sprouts. This also happens for us. So our thoughts are planted deep into our subconscious before we become consciously aware of them. These thoughts are quite literally programmed into us from the moment that we are conceived. So between the time of conception up until age seven, we learn our primary thinking patterns. And it's these thoughts that essentially shape who we become how we act, how we behave, the choices that we make in life, how we interact with people, how we feel about ourselves. All of that is shaped by the programming that we took on during this formative time in our life. And there is this saying, you, you may have heard of it, show me the boy at seven and I'll show you the man. And this is so true because from the age of seven, we will continue to play out the patterns we've taken on up until that age. The big problem in our society is there is very little education available on how to actually change that programming, much of which is very self-destructive, so that we can actually really have a healthy and nourishing life. So if we look at the internet, for example, most of us use the internet, we use computers, but there's a very small majority of people who actually know how to program computers. And it's the same with humans. There's a very small majority of people who actually know how to go in and change that programming. 
reinstall some different software that's going to work better for us and help us achieve the goals that we're after. And this plays a huge part in our self-acceptance, our self-belief and our self-love. For when we're able to let go of the programming, we can have a really healthy relationship with ourselves where there isn't that negative mind chatter dictating our every move. So there are certainly things that you can do to help loosen that programming. And one of the things I always recommend is dating yourself. I'm known for encouraging people to take themselves on a date which serves a couple of really great reasons and purposes. Firstly, the fact that you would spoil yourself in that way, put that energy into yourself, maybe do your hair, put on a pretty frock, take yourself out for an expensive meal. The fact that you would do that, it starts to work against the programming you might have around not being worthy or not being deserving of having this kind of attention, of being spoiled, essentially. A lot of people think they're not worthy of being showered in love or being given undivided attention, even of being respected, which can lead to all sorts of bullying, but that, that's a topic for another video. <laughs> so as you start to care for yourself in a new way, a way that perhaps no one's ever cared for you, the programming that has stopped you from being able to fully receive all that you're worth and all that you're deserving of, it actually starts to loosen. So dating yourself is something you can do any day of the week, something that you can do to consciously start to weaken that programming that no longer serves you. The other thing that's really powerful on these dates that you take yourself on is generally when we're on these dates, because we've got no distractors, there's not another person to distract us from ourself or what we're experiencing in that moment. You're actually there with yourself fully. Now this can be exciting and totally confronting at the same time because you get front row seats to your own insecurities, front row seats to all of these things that maybe you weren't fully aware of before, but that are just starting to pop up. So your insecurities, your fears, these, these thought patterns that are unhealthy, all of the stuff that is all down there in the subconscious. And so this is where you get to find out what's going on for you at a much deeper level. And because there's not distractors around, because you have that space for these thoughts to come up and be seen, you're actually able to fully witness them. Now, I do need to point out that if you are going to start dating yourself, and you want this kind of awareness, don't go on movie dates. <laughs> um, TV, movies, they hypnotize us and take us away from ourselves. So you're really disassociating from yourself as opposed to connecting with yourself. Just something to keep in mind when you design your date. Now, once you start to witness those thoughts and, and have that awareness of what your self-limiting thinking patterns are, from there, you're able to start challenging them. So for an example, you know, one of the thought patterns that you might have on your date might be, I'm not good enough to apply for that job or ask that guy out or wear those skinny jeans. Once you identify the thought patterns, then you can start to question, why do I think that? What evidence do I have that actually goes against those thoughts? Where did that thought even come from? Because ultimately, these thought patterns that we learned, we learned them when we were a child from the big people around us. They weren't actually our thought patterns, yet we adopted them anyway, not realizing the harm that they could cause us. Of course, many people are thrown lots of gunky thinking patterns. Sometimes it can feel like a record on repeat. So challenging every thought pattern as it comes up for you can be quite a tedious process. And the other thing to consider is that because you are consciously working to unhinge the thinking pattern, you will certainly loosen the programming, but chances are you won't get to the root cause of it. Generally speaking, the only real way to get to the root cause of the thinking patterns and essentially delete them right on out of our operating system 
is by accessing the subconscious mind as opposed to the conscious mind, which is what you'd be doing on your dates. So by all means, please start dating yourself. Do it at least once a week because you will notice a difference. But the big shift will happen when you're able to pull the thinking pattern up from its roots, when you're able to go directly into the programming and change it there. We can't change the content of a website by simply visiting the website. We need to go into the back end and change the programming there. And the way that we do that for ourselves is we actually go back to the root cause of when that programming or unhealthy thinking pattern was installed. So when you first took on that belief and you don't need to be able to remember that event because a lot of the time you'll have taken that thinking pattern on before a time you can consciously remember. So maybe you were coming out of the womb or when you were maybe two years old and you don't have any conscious recollection of when that was. But the subconscious, it records everything. And so essentially you access the subconscious and it will take you back to the root cause. Once you're back at the root cause, you're able to start gathering learnings and lessons from that event that created that bit of programming. And when you're able to gather enough learnings from that event, then the, the emotional trigger, the charge on that event, it disappears because you're able to reframe the event to the point that you're able to see it as a gift and take some really positive lessons from that event. And that is what switches the programming so that you're able to actually go, you know what, I am good enough. And not just say it, but actually believe it, feel it in your body. Recognizing that you are not your programming and that you took on the programming from other people is so, so powerful because it helps you realize that you don't have to live your life that way anymore. You don't have to shrink anymore. You don't have to judge or criticize yourself anymore because you're not what you thought you were. And what's really great is going into the subconscious is really quick and really easy and you can create shifts literally within minutes. And this is a key part of what I teach because when you're able to pull up the programming from its roots, then you're able to let go of all the things that that programming was creating in your life. So we're talking things like depression, anxiety, overwhelm, fear, never feeling like you're good enough, not feeling like you fit in, you know, the pains and struggles of everyday life. You can actually learn how to change your programming so that life is easy. Life is pleasurable. Life is fun, <laughs> really fun. The only reason life is hard or a struggle is because we're taught that life is hard. When you uproot that programming, then life is whatever you want it to be. We all have the power to change our programming. We simply need the know-how to do it. And, you know, I, I would love to share this information with you because I am a big believer that the more people we can share these techniques with, the happier the world will be, the more love we'll be able to share, the less struggle there will be in people's lives. And that is what is innately important to me. So, Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you would like me to help guide you deep into self-love, share these tools and techniques with you so you can clear out those negative thinking patterns, then please have a look on the website, gettingnaked.com.au for upcoming courses, programs. Um, and, and, and I really do look forward to helping you fall in love with you.